All right, definitely you have to be able to solve equations by factoring. And if you look at these first two, it looks like I, do, I don't have them equal to zero. So first, uh, we want to set them equal to zero. And I, th I think the best suggestion is to make sure that the quadratic term is positive. So when you're looking at number one, I would move everything to the left side. And when you're looking at number two, I'm, I moved everything to the right side. Once you get to this point, when you solve by factoring, we're going with double bubble. And again, that is just you know our unique term for describing how we're going to factor x squared minus 3x minus 40. We're looking for factors of 40 that combine to make a negative 3. So if we look at negative 8 and positive 5, we're going to get a negative 8x and a positive 5x to give us the negative 3x. And negative 8 times 5 is going to give us the negative 40. And of course, x times x gives us the x squared. So we can factor into this, again, equals 0. And this is a true statement when either one of these is 0. So what x value makes x minus 8, 0? That's 8. What x value makes x plus 5 equal to 0? Well, then negative 5. So those are your two solutions. And on a graph, they would be the x-intercepts because those um, are the x values that make y 0. All right, but look at number 2. Again, I did move everything to the right side because I wanted to keep that term positive. Um, and then I'm going to double bubble. And because this is a lead coefficient, non-1, 2, uh, it is, it's nice because it's prime. So I can go ahead and put 2x, oh, buddy. I can put 2x there, and I can put x there. And then I have to just figure out what factors of 15 are going to make this work. And I need a plus 13. So this is going to give me a plus 15. That's going to give me a minus 2. And then I rock and roll. Uh, looking for what x values make this 0 is going to be negative 7 halves or negative 15 over 2 and then 1. So I, I get my two solutions. All right. Solve the equation using square roots. First, we want to isolate the square root the same way we isolated when we solved for absolute value equations. This essentially is just reverse order of operation, just like solving any equation. So the first thing you want to do is get rid of the 7 by subtraction. Then we want to divide by 4. And then we want to get rid of the square by taking square roots. So subtract 7 then divide by 4, and then make sure when we take square roots, we introduce the plus or minus, the square root of 25 fourths. Um, remember, when you take the square root, you can take the square root of the top, and then you can take the square root of the bottom. Um, okay. And when you do that, the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 4 is 2, so we just get this 5 halves. And then we add the 3 over here, and we put it first, so 3 plus or minus 5 halves. 3 plus 5 halves is 11 halves, or you could write it as 5, 5 and a half. And then 3 minus 5 halves, so 3 minus 2 and a half is 1 half. Uh, over here, same thing, subtract the 53, then divide by negative 1 to get rid of a negative, then take the square root. The square root of 36 is plus or minus 6, and then subtract 2, so we get minus 2 plus or minus 6. Minus 2 plus 6, and minus 2 minus 6, and we get our two answers. All right, solve by completing the square. Uh, this one is set up nice. It's already equal to 0, and I'm going to move over the 4 over here, because this I'm just going to get rid of by adding it to the other side and making it this. Then I'm going to find the magic number. This is my magic number. Right, the magic number is the number that will, that will make this into a perfect square trinomial, meaning it's the number that will let this factor into something squared. We find that by taking the middle term, the b term, dividing by 2 and squaring it. It'll always be positive because you're squaring it. So whether it's negative 8 or positive 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16. And since I added 16 to this side, I have to add 16 to this side. That's only fair. It's an equation, right? The, the equation still needs to be balanced. This then factors to x minus 4, quantity squared. 4 plus 16 is 20. Then I can take square roots. I do need to simplify the square root of 20, which I show over here. Break 20 into a perfect square and a leftover. The square root of 4 is 2. 5 just has to chill, which is why it's still under the radical. Remember, the 4 came outside of the radical because you did evaluate the square root of 4 is 2. And then once you get to this point, you're done. You can't go any farther in this particular case. Up here, when it was like 3 plus or minus 5 halves, you could go ahead and do 3 plus 5 halves and 3 minus 5 halves. But down here, you just stop. It's 4 plus 2 radical 5 and 4 minus 2 radical 5, and it doesn't really get any simpler, so we just leave it like that. Uh, it looks like this one. I, wanna, I wanted to get this term positive. So I moved the x squared to the right side, and the minus 1, or the, the plus 1, I subtracted over here. 
Same procedure, it's just a little messier because this is an odd number. I still divide it by two and square it. Five divided by two is five halves. Five halves squared, meaning five halves times five halves, is 25 fourths. Adding 25 fourths to both sides, remember negative one, you can think of it as negative four fourths. Negative four fourths plus 25 fourths is 21 fourths. Then I take the square root, introduce plus and minus. Um, this is a plus five halves on the left side, so I have to subtract it the right side and make it a minus five halves. The square root of 21 fourths is the square root of 21 over two. I can do the square root of four in the denominator to make it just a two, but the square root of 21 just chills, and so then you just get your final answer as that. All right, solve the equation with the quadratic formula. Uh, again, you would want to equal to zero, and you would want to make sure it's the x squared, then the x's, and then the numbers. So we have a, b, and c. After that, you're just plugging into the quadratic formula, which we know and love. So the opposite of negative three is three, negative three squared minus four AC, four times one times 28, and again, the negative 20 is gonna make this a plus 112, negative three squared is nine. Remember, this number is always gonna be nine, or it's always gonna be positive. Um, the square root of 121 is 11, and so we get three plus 11 over two, three minus 11 over two, and you get your two things. You can actually check these answers really quick because the original thing really factored really nice. So it really did double bubble if you wanted to. You can check and just say that's equal to x minus 7 and then x plus 4. And then you can check to make sure that this actually works. Um, on this one, uh, I, I don't have them in the right order and I have some negatives, but I didn't actually change anything. I just left as is, realizing that this number here is my a, this is my b, and then this is my c. So it's minus minus 7, which is 7, plus or minus negative 7 squared minus 4ac. A is negative, so it's going to turn that into a plus, um, and then you're done. Once you get here, there's nothing you can do to 209. 209 is just a random number, and then you're just done. So you get 7 plus or minus 209 over negative 8. Now, you probably could take that negative and put it out in front, uh, like there, instead of in the denominator, but it's fine in the denominator, it's not wrong, it's just most people would write it out in front, and I guess I just chose not to. Okay, number nine, convert from standard form to vertex form. So this is basically saying complete the square. So leave the, the two kind of just chill, so it's a negative two there and it's just chilling. And I gotta decide, okay, what number do I want there? What's the magic number? Well, divide it by two and squared. Six divided by two is three, three squared is nine. So I add nine, and I have to subtract nine because I can't just mess with this side of the equation. Now, could you add nine here and add nine to the other side? Sure, but it's fine. You can add nine to both sides or you can just add nine and then subtract nine from the same side. Thus, I didn't actually do anything. This factors into the perfect square and then minus two and minus nine make minus 11 and boom. Now I know the vertex. The vertex is at negative three, negative 11. Remember, this is a horizontal shift to the left three, and this is a vertical shift down of 11, and we know that the standard vertex is at zero, zero for the parent, and so we know what happened to the new vertex. It got moved left, and it got moved down. Uh, this one is a little more annoying because of the two. So I'm gonna factor out a two from two x and the 20. If you take a two from the, from the two x squared, you're leaving the x squared, and if you take a two from a minus 20 x, you leave a negative 10 x. This minus one, I just chucked over here and just set it off to the side. Now I gotta think of what the magic number is. I would love a 25 right there because then I know this will factor. Now remember, what did you really do when you added a plus 25 considering you are gonna multiply that by two? So you really added a 50. So since I added 50, you have to come over here and subtract 50. You cannot subtract 25 because that's not what you actually did to the equation. You really added 50. Um, so this two is gonna chill. This thing in here, what we did right there, that factors to x minus five squared. That was the whole point of adding the magic number so it would factor and then the negative 51 chills. And now we know the vertex. The vertex is at five comma negative 51. This moves it right, this moves it down. All right, um, standard form to intercept form. Remember, intercept form is the fancy way to say factored form because in factored form, we can easily find the x-intercepts because we know it's whenever these two guys are equal to zero. Um, so we just have to double bubble. 
since this is a 3 there, I have to have a 3x and an x, and then I'm looking for factors of 8 that are going to combine to make 10. Again, 4x, 2 times 3x, so I get a 4x and a 6x, that makes a 10x, and then you're done. Uh, this one's a little, a little dicey. You've got to be able to deal with a negative sign there, but it's okay. So instead of x and x, I'm going to have a negative x and a positive x. So I'm going to get a plus 3x and then a minus 10x. That will give me a combination of negative 7, and then 3 and 10 make 30. So that's a little loop there with a negative sign, but it's still very doable. Okay, and again, once these things are factored, that means they're in intercept form. Converting from vertex to standard is just multiplying. Remember, x plus 3 squared is the same thing as x plus 3 times x plus 3. Well, when you do x plus 3 times x plus 3, you have to FOIL that out, right? x times x is x squared, 3 times x is 3x, and the other 3 times the other x is another 3x, and so you get that 6x, um, and then you get 3 times 3 is 9. Then I need to distribute the negative 2 to all of those things, boom, 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 and then I need to combine like terms in the end. And so I get my negative 2x squared minus 12x, and then this is a, a minus 13. Again, this is standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c, right? So this is a, this is b, and this is c. Same thing, basically the same, the same thing, except it's in intercept form. You still have to FOIL that out. So let the 3 just chill. Multiply this out. Be careful. You're going to get 2x and an x to give you 2x squared, and negative 5x and an x a 4 and a 2x, and then a minus 5 and a 4. And then you can combine these two things to make a plus 3, and then you can distribute. All right. So I say, uh, let me make it a little smaller. Okay. I say graph this quadratic from standard form. And then this one, I told you pretend that it can't be factored, even though it easily could. So if you can't factor something like this, you would have to use the quadratic formula to solve for the x-intercept. So if you use the quadratic formula, you're going to get these two solutions, which we know is basically just setting y equal to 0, but that's finding the x-intercepts. So now we know the x-intercepts. But once you know the x-intercepts, you know the line of symmetry is right between them. The number between 1 and negative 4 is negative 1 and a half. We also know, we discussed in class, that negative b over 2a will instantly find you the x part of the vertex, meaning the line of symmetry. Once you know the x part, you can plug it into the equation. Remember, you have an equation for y. So once you know the x value, you can plug in for x to find the y value to find the vertex. And so, oh, and the y-intercept, boom, that's easy. That's just the negative 8. It's always the negative 8 because it's when y is equal to 0. It's when x equals to 0. So if you plug x equals to 0, you just get the minus 8. So I get all of these values plot, 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 and then the only one that I wanted you to find is the this guy. That guy's your symmetrical partner to the y-intercept. Vertex, x-intercepts, y-intercept, and boom. Well, you started here. She went to the right one and a half, so you gotta go to the left one and a half, and then they're gonna be at the same y-values. Again, symmetry. So this one, you use the quadratic formula to find the x-intercepts. You can use negative b over 2a, or you can just look at the middle of 1 and negative 4 to find the line of symmetry. Once you know the line of symmetry, you can plug back into y to find the y value, and then you kind of have everything. These are the five points you need to be able to graph on the test. All right, now this one is in vertex form, so they just flat out tell you the vertex. 3, 16. Boom. It's in vertex form. It, this is just telling you the shifts and the stretches based on um, our parent function. Now, if you want to find the x-intercept, you got some choices. Choice one, you could multiply it out and use the quadratic formula. You could multiply it out and you could factor it. Or you could just set y equal to zero and use square roots. In this case, I want to know x-intercepts. I want to know when this guy is equal to zero. So I just put a zero in for y and then I solve. Add this over, then take square roots. Square root of 16 is plus or minus 4. Add the 3 to the other side of the equation. So 3 plus or minus 4, so you're going to get 7 and negative 1. Again, you're finding the x-intercepts. I know the x-intercepts. I already knew the vertex as it was in vertex form. And if you want to find the um, y-intercept, that's always when x equals to 0. It's not as obvious when it is in, in vertex form. Remember, if it's in standard form, boom, it's just right there. If it's in vertex form, you do have to plug in 0 for x. But that's easy, right? 
Zero minus three is negative three. Negative three squared is nine. The opposite of nine is negative nine. Negative nine plus 16 is seven. It's like, oh, okay, zero, seven, and then you got the symmetrical partner. Okay, last one. This one's in intercept form, meaning it's already factored for you. But if it's factored, and you can say, oh, well, negative nine and three. Those are your x-intercepts. You already know those. We also know that the line of symmetry is halfway between three and negative nine, which is negative three. So I know that the, the right there has to be the line of symmetry. And if you have an x value, you can just plug in for x to find the y value. So this is me, that's what me do. That's this is what I'm doing right there. I'm saying, hey, what's the y value when x is negative three? So plug in negative three for x and you find your y value, which means you know the vertex. Um, the y-intercept, again, the definition of the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So just plug in zero for x and solve and you get this. So I know all the values. Boom, 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 boom. And again, this guy's the symmetrical partner to the y-intercept uh, based on that line of symmetry. Okay, so you have to build a graph from intercept form, you have to build a graph from vertex form, and you have to build a graph um, in standard form. And then you have to be able to solve all of these equations. You've got to solve using ver uh, completing the square, solve using square roots, solve by factoring, and solve by the quadratic formula. You should be comfortable with all those things. Okay, probably the hardest one on here is when there's some silly fractions, when there's odd numbers, or when you have to factor and you have lead coefficients, not one, like that two there. That bothers some people, but if you practice enough times, um, you'll get better at it. I would highly suggest studying this weekend by downloading the digital copy of this again, starting all over, and seeing if you can run through all the questions and get them right.